Welcome to the Four Pillars of Men's Health, a podcast of resources for restoring vigor and vitality, bringing you top influencers in the men's health arena, case studies of men who have succeeded and how they did it, and cutting-edge teaching on men's health issues from America's leading men's health guru, Dave Scaddam. Get ready to take steps towards good health. Here's your host, Dave Scaddam. Hey, welcome to the Four Pillars of Men's Health. I'm so glad that you joined us today. I have an exciting podcast today, continuing on with this theme of, of uh, your story. And I, I've met this guy, his name is Randy Faulkner, uh, a couple years ago at a Napoleon Hill seminar certification course we were go- both going through. And Randy, I'm so glad to have you on my podcast. Thanks for being here with us today. Thank you for having me, Dave. I appreciate you. Hey, so oh, just good, so everybody yeah. knows, um, Randy is a retired, he used to be in the tire business, working for Michelin. He had a, a big business going on there, a retired, very successful business. He's a um, been a student of Napoleon Hill since 1968. Um, he just told me that a couple years ago, he ran 26 marathons in 20, uh, yeah, 26 miles, one every week for 26 weeks. Well, that's quite an accomplishment, Randy, so way to go there. And he's in the middle of publishing and uh, delivering a book. He's, he's called Think and Grow Through Art and Music, and I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about that. So, Randy, kind of the way we start these podcasts off is I, I always like to get a feel for where, uh, you know, what's going on in your personal life. But I'm, I'm just curious, what's cooking on the front burner of Randy Faulkner's life right now? What's, what's getting you out of bed in the morning? Well, uh, thanks for having, again, thanks for having me, Dave, and I hope we can uh, shed some light and help some of your listeners yeah. here. Um, you bet. Yeah, well, what, uh, of course, number one, uh, I get up because I love God and I love my wife and I love to mm. talk to both of them and, and see both of them every morning. So that first mm. gets me going. And then beyond that, I, uh, I have two books I'm working on. One, uh, the one that's published, Think and Grow Through Art and Music. And the other is about 101 attributes you probably did not know about our esteemed friend, Mr. Don M. Green, who's the CEO mm-hmm. and uh, executive director at the Napoleon Hill Foundation. I'm about to yeah. finish his book where 101 people, have, uh, some, a lot of good people, have put in uh, attributes about how Don has helped them and people from all over mm-hmm. the United States and all other countries and yeah, just in ta- in talking to you, it's so, it's so inspirational to hear a guy later on in their years, you know, running marathons, writing books, doing, you know, having a great relationship with their family members. It's like that to me. That's like a that is such a healthy thing. I I am really curious to ask you this question: What what in your mind what does make a a person healthy? What, when you when you think of a healthy person, what makes them healthy? Well, there's there's so many different kinds of health. You got mental health. <laughs> mental health is yeah. uh, has a, has a lot to do with physical health, I believe. So it yeah. starts right up there in your brain. It, your yeah. health would, in my mind, would have to start in your brain. No pun intended. But yeah. In my mind, it would yeah. have to start in your brain, and because that's where the core would come from that's where you would mm. get the thoughts well i need to be a healthier person and why do i want to be a healthier person because i want to see my grandkids grow up i want to i don't want to be yeah. in the hospital having them take out this and take out that just to, right. to get by i, I want to i don't want that i want health so the picture to me of a healthy person is a person who first of all would be happy with his or her home life and family life and and that's where that's to me that's where the health starts and from yeah. there then being healthy would be a, just to be a i guess would be a person in, in my mind a person my age who doesn't take any kind of medication or anything and yeah. just uh just feels gets up every day and feels good and feels like oh man i can't I can't wait to get it on. <laughs> a yeah, person who's cool. so much in love that uh, they say, uh, oh, I can't think of the term right now. Uh, take me a minute to get it together. But 
Yeah. Uh, I think love has a lot to do with it. I really do. I'm, I'm yeah, a big fan absolutely. of love and, and uh, okay. love is such a powerful, powerful thing and it can make you or break you. So if you've got good, a good, strong base for love life, then your chances of working on becoming a healthy person are much greater. Yeah. Hey, I, Randy, I love the way you, in my correspondence with you, I love the way you close out your correspondence. Many times it's uh, uh, with love, aloha. And isn't, that kind of ties into what you're saying because that's a Hawaiian term that kind of ties in right with what you're yeah. saying, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. We lived in uh, Hawaii. We retired and sold our tire business in Sedona, Arizona, and moved to Hawaii. And we were over there for three years, and I caught the Aloha spirit. Yeah. And, but I needed to get back over here so I could get this book finished and those two other little projects, uh, which are yeah. related to the yeah. book. And then I yeah. took on the next hey. project. With yeah, go ahead. So, so if you, I know in Napoleon Hill, there's there's a real uh, study and emphasis on positive thinking. But I, I'm just curious. You know, we have to be realistic too. So when you look around your sphere of influence and the people you know, um, you just described this healthy person as being someone who has a great family and is, is physically and mentally healthy. What, what do you think are some of the biggest obstacles to good health in our society? What, what is it that makes people unhealthy or drives us in that direction of, you know, ending up with a medicine cabinet full of pills and, um, doctor visits every three weeks and all that stuff. What, what do you think is driving that? I would have to go back to it's what we put, put in our bodies. It's our food. 90% yeah. of it yeah. is, is food. And I, yeah. uh, we could start a whole new uh, podcast on that if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Mean, that's a whole, it, that's a whole it, nother. Yeah. That's where it, it is starts. So I, cool. I believe it starts with yeah. food, rest, exercise, and, and good clean water, you know. That's yeah. good rest, exercise, and yeah. good clean water. That's that's a start right there. Yeah, yeah that's great. Did I hey, answer so, your question? So what? Or? Yeah, yeah, excellent. Yep. So what? If you look back over your life, what do you see as being some of the the things that help propel you towards good health? And what are some of the things that you saw that maybe you maybe didn't make so great decisions that didn't weren't so healthy? What? What, when you look back over your life, what do you see as the, the positive things and the negative things that happen with you? Well, um, to to give you that, I would have to go into uh, I go into another story, and yeah. I just don't know how much time we have left in this one. Or you, you we love your up? stories, man. We we oh, love okay. your stories. I, I, I'm dying to hear another one. <laughs> okay, well. Uh, the, the, what happened to me, what, what really happened to me, just it, it, it just changed my entire life. When, Because I was young. I had a tire store back in, <clears throat> in Indiana. I had applied. Yeah. I, I, I got out of the computer program because I just got bored of sitting in that office. I, I, there's got to be mm. more to life than sitting in this up 10 stories up in this big office building in this little office. I can't yeah. see daylight. I, I don't like it. Yeah. So I, a friend of mine wanted me to go in the tire business. Uh, he had seen how, how I did with pots and pans, you know, and how much I could sell mm -hmm. them because I just, mm -hmm. I went crazy like Zig Ziglar. I went crazy selling pots and pans. Mm -hmm. and, and so he saw how I did that. He said, man, you'd, you'd be a great partner for the tire business. And he was a Dunlop representative. And I said, mm -hmm. okay, well, I have to go back to something I read in one of Napoleon's book before you ever go in business, the first thing you do is go to work for the competition. I said, that's number one rule in business. Before you just jump into business, go work for the competition. Learn everything they know because they've already made all the mistakes. Yeah. <clears throat> so I said, I'll have to do that. So I got a job selling tires. And anyway, and then we went in the tire business. So, mm. uh, and I took it to the far extremes, you know. I just, again, I put <laughs> the Pulling Hill principles had. 50 some guys working for me and it just created a, wow. a monster. And anyway, so yeah. nonetheless, yeah. uh, I was having a time in my life and I was still, still young and I mean in my twenties and, uh, mm -hmm. I was going to go fly fishing with this, uh, one of my buddies had a dad, a father 
<clears throat> was a taught fly fishing class and anyway i hit it off with his dad real well and yeah uh, I, so we, we were going to go to uh colorado and go fly fishing and so mm-hmm. a few i don't know what it was about a week before then the, the my buddy called me up and said hey uh gonna have to cancel the the fly fishing trip i said why he said well dad's in the hospital i said what's wrong with him he said well he was down at the creek fishing and he had a heart attack Oh no, mm-hmm. no! And he said, and he was he was down there so long, <clears throat> uh, before they could get him, before he he could get back up to where he needed to get to the hospital or something. He'd lost oxygen, yeah. and they cut, so it kind of messed up his brain. I said, oh my lord! I said, well, I want to go mm-hmm. see him. He said, okay, well, yeah, said, you can, but you know, be prepared. He's just not he's not in the same shape he was. I said, yeah. okay, that's all right. I'll, I got to go see him. The name was Bo, so I go to the hospital yeah. to see this guy, Bo. He's sitting in a wheelchair. He was, he was out of bed, but he's sitting in a wheelchair in the you know, mm-hmm. hospital clothes. And I said, Bo. He looked at me and said, one, 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 two, one, two, three. I said, hey, Bo, it's Randy. Mm-hmm. He said, hey, one, 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 two, three. I said, oh, my mm-hmm. God. I didn't know. So I just really, that, that, right there, I said, what in the world caused that? Yeah, I don't want that to ever, yeah. ever happen to me, ever. So, yeah, that that was a day that I said I got to figure out what caused that, you know. And so yeah. I'm talking to him and his doctors and so on. He said, well, he had a heart attack. Well, what caused a heart attack? Well, a heart attacks yeah. where your arteries clog up. Well, what clogs up your arteries? You know. So, so yeah. I, I started yeah. Yeah. peeling back all this stuff, and I ended up <laughs> yeah. uh, spending a lot of time, not a lot of time, but a lot of talk and uh, research with this guy in Arizona who had uh, the Arizona Heart Institute. He had been all over the world doing heart training. He was just the foremost guy on hearts at at the time back then, one of the foremost yeah. guys, I should say. Yeah. And so um, in reading all his stuff, I said, well, cholesterol comes from animals, okay? Yeah. I mean, and we we make our own cholesterol, of course, because we're an animal too. Sure. We make our own cholesterol. Yeah. It's a Band-Aid, and it's a good thing for us. But yeah. when I read that cholesterol only comes from animals, I said, well, it seems to me like if you quit eating animals, your, your arteries wouldn't clog up. Now, that's there's yeah. been some other thinking on it today when it comes to Absolutely. calcium and they, it, calcified and all that kind of business. But yeah. nonetheless, back yeah. then, that was a, a 100% clear thinking. And I thought, okay, mm. so I, I'm going to quit eating it. So I did. I said, I'm going to quit for six months. I'm just going to quit for six yeah. months see how it is. <laughs> So I, I quit for six yeah. months, and, and I got, got through that fine, you know, using Napoleon's goal. You know, I set yeah. a goal, and I can accomplish it using his principle. Yeah. So I, I, I got to that point, and then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go ha- down to this famous steakhouse there in Annapolis. been there since 1902, favorite place. Yeah. So I'm going to have a filet just for the fun of it. So I went down there, <laughs> and I ordered it. I started chewing it, and I, I spit the bite out, you know, and then I thought, okay, well, have another bite. And I started chewing it, and it just, I, I don't know, something happened to me, and I, I just lost my taste for it. I felt like I was hmm. chewing on my arm or something, even though it was so tender. Wow. And it yeah. tasted good, but I just didn't uh. like chewing on it. I, I just, the chewing yeah. part was getting me. I wouldn't, I'd been eating a lot of salads and vegetables and grains. Sure. And, you know, stuff that didn't take a lot of chewing, <laughs> and I wasn't used yeah, to that. So yeah. that was that was it. I yeah. just and the people with me said, "What's wrong?" I said, "Well, I, I just can't eat it." And they said, huh. "Well, why don't you order fish?" The guy over there's got fish that looks pretty good. So I ordered a fish and I ate it. I was fine with that. And then I yeah. then I went through a period where I was completely vegan, where I wouldn't do any kind of fish. I wouldn't do yeah. anything. I wouldn't even yeah. eat honey because it comes from a bee. You know, <laughs> I was just yeah. Really yep. strict. Yep. I got on that for a long time, and then I got off of that and kind of. Yeah. So, but I've been a vegetarian ever since. Ever since back then, thirty-five years ago, I guess it was. I've been a vegetarian yeah. since then. So wow. that's that's where my my health journey started. Yeah. And that's how, when I how realized. How old are you, more. Randy? Go ahead. 71. How old are you? Seventy-one. 71. So everybody out there listening, this is a seventy-one-year-old guy that a couple years ago ran twenty-six miles every week for 26 weeks and listen to this guy he's telling you what is working for him and man that's an incredible powerful story right there randy and i appreciate that hey we're all, we're near the end of our thing i, I just want to do ask you one more thing 
<clears throat> if okay. you, if I, I'm going to, I'm going to put a crown on your head, Randy. I'm going to give you a magic wand. You're now the king of the world and you got a magic wand and you could, you could do one thing that could help men become more healthy. What, what would, what would that one thing be? Help men become more healthy. Wow. God, I would have. See, I just have to go back to the love thing. I first, I'd have to. Yeah. Just saturate their brain with love because that's where it starts. It mm-hmm. starts with love, with love because you got to love yourself in order to be healthy. If you don't love yeah. yourself, then and what's what's the point here? Or I don't know how you're ever yeah. going to actually reach any kind of plane of health if you don't love yourself to start with. So I guess if you wanted yeah. a very simple. Uh, answer without even yeah. thinking. I'd say I'd saturate their brain with love. <laughs> oh, that's that's powerful. That's great, Randy. Hey, hey, just just in closing, I I want people to yeah. find out where they can get this book that you have written, and uh, any information that you can share about this new book that you're working on right now. Um, h- how can people get a hold of that book? It seems like a really powerful book for someone who's get who are getting into the uh, arts and uh, yeah. and let's see what was it yeah so how, how do people find that book how, where, where, how do you do that yeah. okay well I appreciate that question for sure you know because I do want to spread the word and it's not yeah. uh, you know it's not about the money it's more about helping kids and if I can Absolutely. see before, before I go uh, go be with the Lord uh, 30 years from now before that happens, and by the way, by the by the way, I have a I have another goal is to run a marathon at age 100, and Woo! I will not be the first person to do it. There, there's another guy named Faja Singh, who's an Indian from India, huh. and he he ran the Toronto Marathon at age 100. And wow. by the way, uh, Faja, Faja has been a veget- he's never even eaten an animal ever. But wow. he, he says he doesn't. He doesn't do it. He only did it because it's his religious belief. He doesn't believe in yeah. eating animals. Yeah. He's never eaten an animal in yeah. his entire life. I don't know that. I, wow. I'm not even sure he's still alive. He'd probably be 110 today. Yeah. But I know he ran. He yeah. ran one after that too. So anyway, that's beside the point. Really? So uh, what was that's I saying? 30, yeah, that's my that's my long time goal. Okay. 30, yeah. 30, 30, 30. 29 more years from now. <laughs> Yeah. So then, I, if he can do it, I know I can do it. I know I can do it. Yeah. I just got to wait thirty more years to do it. That's all. There we go. There uh, we go. So where where do people find this book? Okay. So uh, uh, they find it at number one. You can go to Amazon, Think and Grow Through Art yeah. and Music, or you can go to my website, Think Art and Music. That's all. Just Think Art and Music, all spelled out. Uh, you can go to the Napoleon Hill Foundation website, which will lead you back to Amazon. It's on pre-sale. Okay. They're shipping it on September 30th. If anybody, mm. anyone goes to my website uh, and orders it, uh, I also s- include a book plate and autograph signature. Not that my signature means so much, but some people mm-hmm. like that. They like to have a book with their name on it. Okay, It, it doesn't matter if my name's mm-hmm. on it, but it's inscribed to them. So. It would be a personal uh-huh. note to them, and uh, that's cool. I, I hope. Yeah. So your so just your website help, is thinkartandmusic.com. dot com. Yep, thinkartandmusic.com. dot com. Think, that's awesome. Think art and hey, Randy, <clears throat> we need to wrap this up. But any 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 last closing thoughts or comments about health? You and you are like a treasure trove of um, <clears throat> information about good health, good decisions. Starting off with Napoleon Hill, he, he, his writings and teachings have had a enormous, I mean, it's, it altered my whole life. So I'm right there with you on that. And um, any last thoughts or comments on um, health and what's going on in your life? Uh, yeah, I want to say one thing about when you mentioned Napoleon, I th- another person who was had a big influence on my life was Zig Ziglar. And I, mm-hmm. I went uh, down to Zig's house and uh, and uh I had dinner with him. I went to church with him. And uh, wow. I, uh, the day I left, I had to catch a plane. And I, he was down in the front row of the church. And I went down there and shook hands with him. And I said, 
Zig, I got to go, but I tell you, I, I, I love you. And he looked at me and said, Randy, I love you too. I've only, I've only really scratched the surface here on the health thing because uh, yeah. uh, there's a lot of things I've done after uh, when I started the vegetarian thing. There's a whole other realm of stuff out there that I think would, your listeners could really get advantage from hearing, but it's going to take mm-hmm. another 15, 20 minutes, so we'll catch that another yeah. time. You've been listening to The Four Pillars of Men's Health with Dave Scadam. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit the fourpillarsofmenshealth.com.